Okay, so this is the second of the sessions on specialist training methods, and today we're going to be looking at plyometrics. Now, this is a far cry from the endurance centered method of altitude training. Plyometrics is very more, much geared up to uh, improving anaerobic capacity. Um, I'm going to set the same structure up as we would in our extended answer questions I did with altitude training. So, we'll talk about what it is, how it works, and then why it's important to certain athletes, what does it give them, but also to consider the pitfalls should you be asked to evaluate it. So what is it? Well, plyometrics is essentially a combination of bouncing, bounding, the use of jumping, and it's focused, as I said before, on improving the qualities of type 2x muscle fibres. So it's all about power, it's all about speed, collectively that explosive strength, and it does that through a combination of eccentric and concentric muscle contraction. So a little bit of revision on types of contraction in there as well. So that's what it is. So how does it work? Well, it works in three phases. And the first phase is the eccentric phase. And the eccentric phase can sometimes be referred to as the loading phase, which will become clear as we go on and through this eccentric phase what we are attempting to do is to store elastic energy and the amount of elastic energy that we can store has a direct then correlation with the amount of power speed explosive strength we can employ so because this is so important how does it work well we can go back a little bit to our work on PNF, okay? And if you remember, as a muscle lengthens, as a muscle changes in length, the proprioceptor, the muscle spindle, detects this, sends a message to the central nervous system, and the central nervous system then sends impulses to create a stretch reflex, which essentially is there to prevent overstretching so the muscle doesn't tear. Well, this ha also happens in an eccentric phase. So if we take jumping, for example, and we take the landing part of the jump, you have been taught since you were wee, wee little children that as soon as you land from a jump, you're going to bend the knees and you'll bend the knees to cushion the landing. Well, you cushion the landing, that whole process is caused by an eccentric contraction of the quadriceps, where the quadriceps actually lengthens but provides force because it's controlling that flexion of the knee. Now, normally we would suggest or we would say that the hamstring creates flexion of the knee, but that would be the concentric contraction of the hamstring. In this instance, yes, we are flexing the knee, but we're controlling that movement. So if I could just show you for a second, I'm going to draw a femur now. So if there's, a, there's the femur and that's the, the ends of the femur there, so the thigh bone, and if we have here the tibia, which sits underneath that, that shin bone, and this is a side on view, and here's a quadricep, so the four muscles that sit here. Now, tendon of the quadricep attaches into the pelvis, and this tendon here attaches in to the top of the tibia, so it goes over the knee. So you'll notice that the muscle actually rolls over the joint here. So that's fine in this situation, but what if we bend the knee? Well, if we go here, here's our femur, and here's our tibia, and there's our foot. Okay, so we've got our knee bent. So remember, the tendon is inserting at the top of the uh, at the top of the tibia, and also into the pelvis as well. Now, tendons are are pretty tough. Okay, they're pretty inflexible, and they have to be because muscle fibres themselves are quite elastic, so they need a solid anchor. So there's not really much movement here. There's not much stretch that you're going to get out of a tendon. So therefore, when you bend, when you bend your knees, your quadricep has to stretch. Okay, so it stretches round. So beg your pardon, I just need to take that a little bit further. So it stretches round. Okay, so it stretches around the knee. So what we've got is the muscle lengthening. But within an eccentric contraction, it's also providing force. So there's a, a real tension in there as well. So that tension is picked up as we are as we are stretching. The muscle spindles pick up that difference in length, sends uh, a signal to the central nervous system, which then instructs, sends an impulse uh, to create the stretch reflex. And it's in this stretch reflex 
that the elastic energy is now being stored. So we've now really stretched the muscle, we've held it as far as the body is prepared to go. And like an elastic band now, it's essentially stored with elastic energy, okay? Ready to be released. So that's the first phase. The second phase is known as the amortization phase. And this is also known as transition. And it's that period between the stretch, okay, the lengthening of the muscle, and then the shortening of the muscle to provide the explosive activity, okay, the explosive movement. So we really want this as short as possible. And the reason being is that the longer you hold uh, the transition phase, the more elastic energy is lost, the more that storage of elastic energy is lost. So it's really important that we hold that as short as possible. And then our final stage, no prizes, concentric phase, sometimes referred to as the unloading phase. And that is the phase at which we see to create a concentric contraction in the quadriceps. So we've started with that eccentric contraction, the controlling of the flexion of the knee, and now we're going to extend the knee using that stored elastic energy through the quadriceps into our jump. Okay, that is the unloading phase. We're unloading all that elastic energy. So if I just pop those three phases up again, so we have eccentric, amortization and concentric and if I just take this hairband that I have just popped here my daughter's hairband okay um, we can simulate a, a, a kind of process so imagine this is the quadricep now so the quadricep here's the pelvis and here's the tibia okay so when we stretch the muscle fibre works in exactly this way, okay? And as soon as I can get to a point where actually this is as far as it's prepared to go and I can feel it might just break, then that can represent that stretch reflex, okay? So I've taken it as far as it's prepared to go. Then I have my transition phase, which is where we're no longer stretching any further, and then I have my concentric phase where we release, okay? Now obviously the pelvis doesn't release the muscle, but essentially what we do is that the knee straightens, so the knee extends, which is going to shorten the muscle, but also through providing force. So if I stretch and then let go, that's quite a powerful response, okay? So I'm storing the elastic energy, and then as soon as I get to the point of the stretch reflex, I let go, then I provide quite a sharp uh, piece of force there in that concentric phase. However, if I stretch it and hold, so I hold that transition phase, then actually when I do release, it's not quite as powerful because I've lost some of the elastic energy. And if I hold it for long enough, it's no different to a stretch ultimately. And actually I'm going to stretch the fibers. So in a, in a sense, I'm going to lose quite a lot of elastic energy and not be able to provide the force. So I will have a eccentric contraction, an eccentric phase, beg your pardon, which involves an eccentric contraction, which stores elastic energy. As soon as we've reached that stretch reflex, there's my amortization phase. I want to keep that as short as possible so I can release as much elastic energy into the movement, jump as far as I can, jump as high as I can. Okay, so that's the how. So why do athletes do it, particularly power athletes? So we look at long jumpers, we look at um, triple jumpers and, and high jumpers. They would be our most obvious clientele within this one. So, so why might they use it? Well, ultimately through plyometrics, we can produce through that force it's so maximal and it's such a low bearing exercise um, that actually we thicken the muscle fibers so we don't really grow more fibers the reason why muscles become thicker is ultimately because the muscle fibers themselves thicken okay so they now become stronger so we've got thicker muscle fibers that are now stronger they're adapting to the amount of load that we are placing on them that's the first thing the second thing 
is that we then, because they are stronger, we can delay the stretch reflex. So the stretch reflex actually takes longer to kick in. That means that we can stretch the muscle further. That means we can increase the amount of elastic energy that we're storing now. And ultimately, that increases the loading phase. Now, these fibres have become more powerful, more explosive. It means they can contract quicker with more speed, more power. They have greater explosive strength within them. Okay, so those are the key things. So this is why long jumpers, high jumpers, triple jumpers do a lot of plyometrics because this is where their load is. Okay, we're really attempting to create as much elastic energy as possible to increase the distance that we can jump, increase the height that we can jump. But what are the issues with this? Well, the problem with plyometrics is it's maximal and it's load bearing. Okay, it really pushes the muscle fibers to their limit. So ultimately, we can cause tearing. Okay, it can happen. In the same way we talked about with plyometrics, if we take a muscle too far, if we try to override that stretch, stretch reflex too vigorously through PNF, and if we try and take the muscle to its stretch reflex and try and push beyond too quickly, then we can cause tearing. That means that ultimately we need to build up gradually. And that means everybody. And in, in two ways here, both in terms of the quality of your training programme, but also in your training session, your muscles need to be well and truly warmed up and well and truly prepared to be able to perform in such a maximal activity. And this means that ultimately it's not for the untrained. Okay, This can cause real issues. There is a real danger because you are really pushing your muscles to the limit. Those type 2 X, that strength bearing, the load bearing element, you are pushing them to the limit. So therefore, they can be quite dangerous for the untrained there where we can cause uh, some, some real significant damage to our muscle fibres. So that's what they are. Oh, that's what plyometrics is. That's how it works. That's why it's important to some athletes, but also these are the pitfalls.